back at the Amazon Game Tech booth, and right now we're going to take a look at matchmaking, a subject matter that has become so important over the last couple of three years, well actually over the last couple of three decades, it seems like, doesn't it? And AWS has a number of solutions. I'm here with our principal engineer, Jeff Pear, who's going to talk about how we allow you to allow customers to quickly build and then also optimize their matchmaking solutions. Yeah, uh, thanks, Garnett. Yeah, there you go. Oh, thanks, Garnett. Yeah, so with matchmaking, it's a multivariable problem, right? You want to help develop, or you want to help players find the funnest games they possibly can, but they also need to be low latency games, and you also want to control for how much wait time those players are waiting for. Uh, so we're just going to walk you through. GameLift is an AWS service to host dedicated servers in the cloud. You integrate our SDK, you give us a server, we handle scaling it, managing it, routing players to the right place. FlexMatch is our matchmaking solution. It's free to game with customers. We're going to walk through a very quick, uh, a very quick study of what this looks like. So, a typical integration with GameLift, you have your uh, game clients, your client logic. You have a backend service of some sort that has authority for skill level, for player data, inventory, things like that. You want to make sure your backend service is what's actually sending players to your matchmakers so that you know, hacked clients aren't lying about their skill level or things like that. So we break matchmaking into two different phases. We call it uh, the grouping phase. This is where you find the funnest matches possible for groups of players. Once you find that group of players, you want to find the best server worldwide that'll give them the lowest latency uh, possible. I'm going to show you one thing that we do a little bit differently than most other uh, developers. So a lot of developers, uh, we're in 14 geographic regions, and so if they're in 14 regions, they would create 14 different matchmakers. And now we highly recommend against this. The reason why is because your high-skilled players won't be able to find each other. If your best players are on the East Coast or the West Coast, right, you're kind of abandoning them because you've already pre-segregated them. So what we recommend is you have one matchmaker for your whole global pool of players. Uh, and what that lets you do is you use your rules to de uh, determine what is that trade-off you want to make on letting your highly skilled players find each other versus you know, how much latency are you tolerant of versus how long you should wait. If you put everybody into one pool together, uh, then you have all of the control to make that decision versus uh, if you balkanize them uh, beforehand. Okay, I have a so, so Jeff, what do our customers tell us about how that works for them? Because it sounds like a big difference between us and a, a, between the AWS system or the Gameless system and a number of other systems. Yeah, so it's, um, it's just all about uh, helping those players find each other and have the funnest games possible. Yeah. It also is, you know, if you ever played a game late at night, right, it's also a low population problem or a low population game problem. It also simplifies uh, management. So this is uh, directly based on, on feedback that we've gotten. But uh, at the same time, you know, if for whatever reasons, you know, you did want to hard segregate by geography or whatever, right? We, we try to help customers with best practices, but we give you all of the tools to make the decisions uh, that are right for your games. And of course, we do support um, segregating at whatever level that you, you would want to segregate at. Um, this is the actual rules-based language. So you'll see it's plain text. This also came straight from customers. Uh, because plain text, a game designer could come in, change these numbers, just click commit, and iterate really, really quickly, right? And that's what we really wanted to help people do, is iterate quickly. With plain text, you can also copy-paste examples, right, out of documentation. You can share them, post in forums. Um, but for the engineers like me, um, you can also check these things in the source control, you can diff them, you can code review them. So like everybody wins with, with this plain text format. Um, there's only, uh, we'll just walk through an example really quick. Uh, there's only four sections you have to understand. You can tell us attributes on you know, what you want to match. Here we're saying skill, but it could be any number of attributes, DLC, platform, things like that. We have teams. Uh, and so the teams here, we're saying two different teams uh, with variable number of players, but it could be three teams, one team, uh, asymmetric monster hunter, it's whatever's right for your game. Uh, rules is saying, hey, we want the average skill player of both teams to be within 10 skill points of each other. We want everybody in the match to be 50 milliseconds away from each other. And our last section is expansions, uh, where this is the wait time constraint. You can say, hey, if somebody's been waiting for uh, more than 10 seconds, maybe let them play against somebody who uh, you know, is 100 skill points away from them or 150 skill points away from them. So. Uh, we launched this, uh, people were very happy, but we got feedback right away from customers about a very common problem that happens. 
Uh, and that's like, hey, we went to all the trouble to make this nice a 5v5 game, and immediately somebody disconnects right when the game starts. And so based on customer feedback, we built this feature called Backfill, because FlexMatch already knows everybody who's in that game, we know the player data for those people, and we know who left, and the rule set. So you could optionally ask FlexMatch, hey, for this person who just disconnected, can you go find a perfect uh, replacement for them? And we'll go do that. Uh, and then we call that backfill. Um, and then we just go on to say, you know, cross-platform is becoming more and more important. We are platform neutral. We enable cross-platform. Uh, and at the end of the day, we talked about matchmaking, but you actually get placed on the dedicated servers worldwide. Uh, and this is showing that GameLift is completely dynamic. That as you know, player demand uh, grows, this is a very typical player demand curve over the course of a day, uh, we will add servers dynamically and then we'll remove servers as the player demand uh, drops off so that you're paying for exactly what you need uh, and no more, no less. You don't have to guess about capacity. Yeah, I would say from a, from a standpoint, like this capacity line running at the top is what was really mirroring very closely the demand. And we're, you know, even here we have a little margin, so we feel safe because we're at a very we're pegging it out here. We're like we really have a lot of players coming in, but we're still we still got a safety zone. Yeah. In real world practice, how how consistently are we able to achieve this? Um, very well. Again, the we the developer uh, chooses the numbers. We yeah. we come up with best practices, but the developer always has 100% of the control. So we implement this with something called target tracking auto scaling, where the customer says what level of buffer they want, and we just hit that number via a, a control system auto scaling in the back end. So if you say I want 85% utilization or 90% utilization, you just plug that number in, uh, and the control mechanisms and auto scaling will just take care of the uh, the magic for you. Good stuff. GameLift is actually live right now, available on AWS. Jeff is, uh, of course, working hard to always implement new features. Yeah. I see you. these guys are actually sat right next to me in the, in the building, and they uh, they work all day and night to uh, get you guys working, and, and very customer responsive. Obviously, we can see it's working out great there. Uh, we are going to move now, though, and talk a little bit about using machine learning for auto scaling, which is a whole other kind of way of approaching this beast, uh, and it might be a little riskier. Let's go take a step over here, and we'll find out.